anything about this. But, you, but you, if you know about Catherine Kim, that you know that there was jojoba left over from October. No, I don't know this. Wait, I guess I'm out of the loop. Oh my goodness, whose loop have you been in? Well, I'm American, so I'm not too bright. Well, and, you know, it's not even so much that. I think it's the use of medical marijuana. I, th I think it's the connections to Margaret Cho and Snoop Dogg. <laughs> that are really... I love a good Snoop. Oh, you do. You do. I love you Snoop. Do. You yeah. do. Well, you do. I like Snoop as well. Yeah. yeah. Although, what, what happened with him and Martha Stewart? Did they were they a couple? I I think they were just you know smoking buds, buds oh. <laughs> smoking buds. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> smoking <laughs> quite yeah. literally. Yeah. Now, would you like to introduce me to this beautiful man, please? Yes. Yeah, so sorry, sorry. Oh, so, hello. Hi. Hi. So, How are you? Hi. I'm very well. I'm loving yeah. the vision. Are you loving the vision? Oh. Thank you. Yes. Gabe is my name. Yes. Yeah. No, I'm I was about Jojo. To go to Lovely to meet you. Gabe. And is Gabe What's your name? This Jojo. is Jojo. This is Jojo. Jojo, very nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you. Jojo, and I met Gabe on the set of a show called Queen of the Universe, mm -hmm. which was the, it's kind of like American Idol or the X Factor for drag queens because they sing live. Oh, wow. Yeah. And um, Gabe was one of the musical producers on it, along with another man that we won't mention, because quite frankly, she doesn't need the exposure. Oh, and uh, <laughs> and we used to have a con flab after every show as to how many times I said the word blouse during my warm up. So we used to... <laughs> you are a blouse lady, aren't I am, you? I am. I'm very blouse based. But then I was, I was a big fan of the blouse bun. <laughs> and I have, I was on the phone to Johnny at World of Wonder the other day and I said, listen, I want my own backstage section and it's called Bruce's yeah. Blouse House. And it's an up close and personal with the Queens. Oh, I could see you very much. A vision of you in your own blouse would be lovely. Thank yes. you very much. Uh -huh. Sorry, was I'm he receptive of that? Did he like the idea? <sighs> well, I, I don't know because I'd spent like about 10 minutes shouting at him because I just needed to know whether <laughs> the 24th was a dark day or a day that I was in so I could go and do a corporate. You know, that's oh, the thing. Yes, they, yes. they just want you on hold. They want you to ruin sure. your life so you can't earn mm. any other money. <laughs> um, my, my other yes. show, which was my idea, was Rimming with Rue. Um, <laughs> oh, I have not heard of this. <laughs> it's still very, it's still very well, experimental it's embryotic. Still very much in the pre-production phase. Hey, pre-production. Yes. Pre I, I believe that Rue still has his pants on. <laughs> now, Gabe, where where in the world are you talking to us from and what time of day is it with you? I am in Los Angeles and it's 2 a.m., oh, wow. uh, which is great because I'm a night owl, so I usually go to bed around 4 or 5 a.m. <laughs> oh, okay. So, well, the, the, yeah, this is should, perfect. You should follow Gabe on um, Instagram because you'll either see him driving mm -hmm. with a lot of music or Lovely. you'll see him stoned and licking because <laughs> uh, you like a lick, don't you? You like to kind of lick. You... I think we're not talking ice cream here, are we? Oh, no, 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 no. He just licks the air. He's, uh, 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 he's like a licking lizard. <laughs> He, he, he loves I must that. be really high because I don't remember these videos. This sounds wonderful. Oh my god! No, they were, they, they, but they are good. So, where about in LA do you live? I, I'm in Valley Village, which is like kind of in between uh, like Studio City and Sherman Oaks. So I'm in the, I'm in the Valley. I am <laughs> fully comprehensive read the Valley because I've rediscovered Selling Sunset. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I want to stop put to Chriselle because I think she's needy. I really do. I think she's needy. I love your assessment of people. You can just kind of whittle them down to one word. Yeah. Needy. But she is. She's you know where so... you are with Bruce. Oh, absolutely. Abs <laughs> absolutely. But not only do you do stuff for drag, because you were involved with um, music for the drag game, the RuPaul's Drag Race live show in Vegas. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That was the first thing I got to do for them. That was a blast to do. So yeah. how did all that happen? How did you get, because I mean, I'm not saying that that isn't the type of thing you like as a civilian lady, but how did you get into <laughs> it professionally? Well, um, RuPaul and that company in particular, or music in particular, or... Well, or the I blouse suppose, beating. I suppose, no, no, no. no. We'll, we'll listen, we'll put the blouse to one side at the moment. The blouse okay, is okay, being okay. steamed. The blouse oh. is with Madonna and it's being Fabrice. Oh, my God. Oh, Amazing. my God. Well, she yeah. spat on a blouse, unfortunately. Did you see her and her oh. son and he was wearing the Adidas dress that she had on in the 90s? Yes. Yeah, yes. I did see that. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, listen, I mean, I'm a mother as well. I wouldn't let the dog go out wearing that manky old dress. I mean, it looked as though it had stains. <laughs> I he looked very sharp in it. So he did that's look all very right. sharp. It's, Do you, you worry yeah. about Madonna? I worry about Madonna because I kind of think if Madonna doesn't have it together, then the world doesn't have it together. Oh, she's the queen of the gays. Oh, she's not. Yes. I think um, 
I'm curious to see what music she comes out with next, because yes. I think every time she, she kind of gets, um, a, a little, uh, cerebral in life, mm -hmm. then, uh, you know, things kind of come out that are great in music. So, uh, you know, I, I have my fingers crossed. Oh no, uh, fingers and toes. I mean, I love Madonna. I really, really do yeah. love Madonna, but I can't take yeah. another Frozen remix. I think there's been 319. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 319. Yeah, I feel like that was almost a time biter. You know, she's just biding her time and, and uh, with, with that single, I think, I hope. Um, I'm hoping something great comes out. I don't know. I know she's working in the studio a lot, so. Well, she is um, because has she, has she not just yeah. gone back to, um, no, her label was Maverick, wasn't it? She, has she gone back yeah. to Warner Brothers? Have they not I, just bought her back catalog or something like that? See, I'd love a greatest I, hits tour, but I don't know if she could sing I them know. properly with the grill. She has to take the grill out. <laughs> What's the, the grill? grill the grill is um, when you get metal and you put them over your teeth. It's very gangster. It's very LA Southside Central. Is that correct? And what is the purpose? Yeah, of or, this? or like a barbecue. If you're going to barbecue, you know, it's another grill you can put on. <laughs> well, absolutely. I'm having a barbecue in the summer. It's a blouse and burger event. <laughs> I'll be there. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm having two pockets on the breasts of blouses to put the burgers in. So, no, were you a musical child? Yes. Yeah. I um, was drawn to music right away. Um, I think I could sing from the time I was about three or four. And I, I knew it was what I wanted to do when I was about five or six. Wow. Um, and we, we didn't have money for piano lessons. Uh, there was not much money for anything, but I saw a $10 keyboard in the toy store and I begged my dad to, you know, buy it for me. He, he was, he took me there to get a model airplane, which is really for him to buy or to, to put together. Um, and I said, no, but I really want this keyboard. I really, really want it. And so he bought it and uh, he, he said, you know, that's going to live under your bed for, you know, after a week. And, and it didn't, I taught myself how to play it and, uh, oh, wow. it just kind of went from there. So I, I learned by ear and, you know, my sight reading is pretty slow because of that, but I have a good ear so I can pick up things pretty fast. So I guess that's uh, the pros and cons to not having uh, music lessons. So can you read music? I can. Yeah. yeah. No, so can I. But you know who can't? <laughs> Shirley Bassey. Mm. Just thought I'd throw that in. Ah, oh, yes. I love her. I oh, love her. Absolutely. Who, who yeah. doesn't? Beatles couldn't read sheet music. Michael Jackson couldn't, you know, Pavarotti. So. Oh, well, but Pavarotti mm -hmm. ate the music. I think that's the oh unfortunate thing. <laughs> I mean, was there a blouse big enough? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm... he's my favorite tenor. He could do whatever he wants. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fascinated by your association with Belinda Carlisle. Ah. Uh, that she is the best person to, she's my favorite person to work with i absolutely adore her oh wow because she's so, fabulous i think that yeah it, well it's funny um I, I mean i can tell you how that came about i i had released a single uh I, I do my own music as well and i think it was uh during my second album i released some stuff 2012 mm. and i really i uh, received a message on facebook and this kid in the south of france said hey i'm moving to la i really love your music you know i just wanted to let you know and i said oh thank you so much it means so much to me and he said his mom did music so i think you know france maybe she's a cabaret singer uh, so i said oh what does your mom do uh, and he says oh i don't know if you know her but she's belinda carlisle she's in a band called the go-go's okay there was not a group I listened to more growing up and a singer I did not listen to more than Belinda. I sang, I owned everything they ever did. So I thought this was a friend messing with me because all of my friends know I'm a huge Belinda fan and Go-Go's fan. So I'm going through this Facebook page, like, come on, this is somebody messing with me. And it was real. So I said, well, I'm a big fan of your mom's. Um, I'd love to <laughs> do some songs for her. So I sent him a couple and she wasn't really in the pop zone. So I just thought, oh, they're just not good enough. So I sent her a third song, uh, which became her single uh, son that came out, I think 2013 in the UK. Um, and we've just worked together ever since. I've opened for, for her on tour uh, in the UK as her support act three, three times. Mm -hmm. And, um, and we're working on her newest album right now. And she's just literally the coolest, nicest, most supportive person. So you're person. saying you literally, it was a, a, a Facebook chat with somebody. I mean, the complete coincidence. Her son. Wow. <laughs> yeah. 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 And he lives in LA. He's, he's become a good pal, but that was just like, isn't it funny you know, because I mean, obviously when we were, I'm older than you, but growing up, I mean, you just didn't have that contact with celebrities right. or anything, but the power, right. that's when the power of social media is amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Oh my gosh. You can like, literally I, contact anybody. And if you get yeah. on, there's no, there's no bitter gatekeepers to get through or producers. Exactly. Or it. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. I yeah, love stories like that. Cool. So have you always been a Belinda fan? <laughs> I've loved Belinda Kalila. Absolutely yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Now, am I right in thinking, and I'm not trying to be disparaging, but her, her and Madonna, they're pretty much the same era, same age? 
Yeah, actually a day apart. Oh my goodness. So she's August yeah. as well. Yeah, oh, she's you August are. 17th oh and Madonna's August 16th. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I love Belinda Carlisle, but I would not be able to tell you when her birthday was. See, I think that means that she doesn't love her really, but then that's just me. That's just me. So what was, what was it like going from being fanboy to opening act for her? Because th- oh. th- that was 2014, the first time you did that. Is that correct? Yeah, it was. Good job. Yeah, that was. Um, well, I, I mean, I have to tell you that first session with her, I was really nervous. Yes. Uh-huh. We, we had already talked on the phone and I already knew her speaking voice. So it was already weird to hear her doc- talking on the phone. Um, and then, you know, before working with her in the studio, I was just so nervous. And she wanted to rehearse the, the song uh, acoustically, which is the mark of a, a pro. Um, and we just, you know, hit it off. And from there, it just got like, we just became pals more and more because I produced more of her songs. Um, and then opening for her in the UK, 2014, the first show was in Birmingham. And Never I mind. was so nervous. You know, <laughs> I was so nervous because um, I just, you know, the opening acts, they don't know you. They're not there for yeah. you. Mm. Um, and so I was just hoping that they would like me. And the crowd was really, really receptive and warm. Um, and, and Belinda was, you know, very proud. So she's nothing but supportive. So, uh, yeah, that tour and the two other tours I did for her were just so much fun. I got to see a lot of the UK. Was that the first time you'd come over to the UK? That was, yeah. Wow. And, you, yeah, and the first, first place time. you went is Birmingham. And I know we'll get yeah. complaints from people <laughs> from Brummies, but it is an interesting Well, he, he wasn't yeah. taking up the bull ring, no. so that was okay. <laughs> that was okay. And for the smutty people out there, that's a shopping centre. Center. <laughs> but what people don't know about you is you're quite a nervous flyer, aren't you? I used to be, yeah. yeah. I was a very nervous flyer. Um, and I mean, now, you know, Xanax and I'm fine. I'll just sleep the whole way. Mm-hmm. But, you know, there's a period there where it was just really kind of a treacherous thing for me you know um well it's completely it's, unnatural putting a big yeah. massive bit of metal tubing in the sky yeah Madness. sorry jojo's recently had sex she's just going back to the memory <laughs> <laughs> she's like a helium balloon that was cut from its uh, string so she's all, all tubes and things no i i don't mind flying but i don't think i'd ever go to australia because i'm suspicious of being in the air for that length of time no you have to stop on the mm. way because they can't go no 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 i'm fully stop. comprehensive for that right. thank you very much <laughs> i mean i do live a life thanks <laughs> unlike some um however <laughs> i just don't like the idea because i've flown to new york i could probably fly like early, yeah. but that's about as long as I could do. Yeah, gotcha. Um, but uh, the other thing I was talking about this actually was um, they've re-recorded the messages now on on the flights that you have to take off your oxygen mask before putting on your oxygen mask. You have to take your face mask off first. Have you seen this? Oh, I haven't noticed that when I flew. Oh, it, which okay. I was absolutely gobsmacked that they were that stupid. Shut up! It's not COVID. It's got nothing to do. Well, it is slightly to do with COVID. I'm not allowed to talk about COVID. Oh because my I get god! We haven't done a phrase. Shut up. Anyway, I will not. Not is... in front of a musical genius, and you want to bore everyone to death with face masks. What's wrong with you? No, because it's the point of flying is that the we have those oxygen masks, and I just think I'm quite nervous about flying, but I don't understand why we have the oxygen masks anyway, because why, if you knew you were going to be in a car cr- a car crash, a flight crash, why would you bother? Why would you have oxygen? got on the plane? No, but why would if you, you have the oxygen mask on? What is this? Well, I'm just, I'm trying to say to Gabe. I My God, an Emmy flying. Award winner and look at you. No, I'm <laughs> talking about bloody easy jet. I did. It, well, it wouldn't be easy jet from LA. I'm not that stupid. Anyway, I like the fact that this. this fear of flying. That's, that's interesting as Do well. you know what you wouldn't have enjoyed then? The flight attendant. Have you watched that, Gabe? The flight no, attendant. it's on my list. Is it oh, good? you have to. Why? M- because it's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you recognise that word, good? <laughs> It's Have you delivered anything good recently? No, no, I didn't think so. Oh, she's just pissed off because someone went to see her show and didn't enjoy it. But more of that later. Anyway, how do you know, deal with rude. criticism? Criticism um, in general, and how do you deal with criticism if you know the person? Um, I, you know, I have, I have a very thick skin. Um, I was picked on a lot in middle school. <laughs> oh, so was and, I. Was it because of your yeah. love of blouses? <laughs> yeah, I think so. It was. They knew. I didn't know you, but they knew. They uh, used to yeah, call they... me the Calot C-U-N-T. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> that is a good um, question. How do, do, because obviously being so creative that people, uh-huh. you know, universally, I would think would love what you do, but there will be some people that don't. So how do you cope yeah. with that? Um, I, so, you know, being picked on in middle school, I, I got a, a thick skin then. It, you know, it's, it's, 
some people will just not like you because they don't want to like you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and also, you know, there, so the Beatles are my favorite, but there are some people who don't like the Beatles and you know, that's okay. I probably don't trust them, but they, you know, um, everybody likes what they like. Mm-hmm. Um, I get sick of myself. Sometimes I don't want to hear anything that I've worked on at all. So, you know, if somebody doesn't like something I've done, I totally get it. Can I, talk and and very briefly because i i bored the life out of you in direct messages the, the best thing musically i've seen was my walk on music when i was your yes. support i'm willow pill sung by sarah hudson i hate yes. people um, and yeah. how, how did that because honestly when i was watching the live show and i saw willow do that i thought the crinus house just give it to her you know camden move yeah. along etc cetera, etc cetera. <laughs> how did that come about and and whose idea was it because I, I i do feel it was an anthem written for myself and I have I, adopted it as my walk on music and I'm not paying you PRS. Um, but how, how did it, how did it all come about? Um, I can, uh, well, so, you know, Brett Leland, he did all of he oh, wrote all her, the songs. But, but <laughs> her, where is she? Hamburger Mary's. <laughs> oh my God. And, 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 you know, his list of credits is, you know, twice the length of mine. He's, he's just so impressive. He's amazing. Um, and he's, you know, been the, the head music person on the, the show for, I think seven years or so. So he, and he brought me onto the live show into mm-hmm. Gregory. So, uh, so he was writing the season finale songs and, um, he, he wanted a track that he, he referenced a couple early nineties house songs, uh, groove is in the heart. Yes. Um, yeah. And, and I had also, I think I, I said, you know, maybe something like crystal waters, um, yeah. you know, gypsy woman. Yeah. Um, and so then I, I did the track and then, gave him that. And then, you know, the next day he, he sang me, uh, what he wrote, which was, you know, all the lyrics and melodies to, to I hate people. And I immediately, I loved it. Just his delivery, you know, he, he, has, he's so clever. Um, he has such wit and the way he performed it was utterly fantastic. He's friends with Sarah Hudson. Um, they've written together. I've engineered a couple of their sessions. So I, I've known her a little bit mm-hmm. and she came in and nailed that vocal just phenomenal i think oh, in like 20 minutes yeah no i mean just it is brilliant yeah it, it does I, th- I think it speaks to a lot of people especially it, at the moment i it, don't think any of us like yeah. anyone well yeah. I, I think you just get tired of people after a while not yeah. people that you're interviewing for podcasts of course but i just mean they, see the thing <laughs> it's is, okay it, if you do it, it's no, no 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 not at all see the thing is it's not that i don't like people do you know what? i hate stupidity mm-hmm. and unfortunately yes, yes. a lot of people are blessed they're very well endowed stupid wise mm-hmm. yeah and you're just yeah. like i can't actually deal with this yeah yeah and we've seen so much of that kind of you know be a lot more visible and, and a lot louder in the past couple of years yes, yes people have that ability that's the downside of social media that everybody yes, has yeah. not great everybody has a voice but sometimes you just want to turn them down how do yeah. you deal with people do you have people who are very sycophantic around you gabe people that try to crawl up your ass not in the way that sounds rude sorry <laughs> <laughs> well i mean that is um, something that gabe enjoys but in his own time <laughs> yeah, yeah. metaphorically speaking you know, you know me well no, um no i i um can you spot a bullshitter? Can you spot someone yeah, that's yeah, just yeah, yeah. trying yeah. to, yeah. And I've had that since, since I was little. I'm, I'm, you know, I have a good nose for picking out that. Um, I, well, first of all, I'm the biggest critic of myself. So I've never met anybody that could be as harsh, you know, to me about my work or, or level of work as me. Um, but I, you know, there are people that I know who will not BS me and I go to them you know, if I have a new song yeah. and I just want feedback, um, even if they do, you know, lie to me, I'll know. And so I can kind of gauge like, okay, it's not very good. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, it's nice to hear compliments, but at the end of the day, if I don't believe in something I've written or produced, it doesn't matter. Like I have to really feel comfy with it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's where delusion lies, doesn't it? And then a lot of people. That's what I was going back to. So if you've put something out there um, that, you you know, you enjoy and that you have faith in and all that kind of stuff, Mm -hmm. and you get a critique from someone that's close to you, how how do you deal with that? Um, If it's someone who's close to me, um, I mean, you know, it could be something like they, you know, don't like the mix or they don't like the core. I mean, but everyone's entitled to their, yeah. opinion. You know, to their opinion. Yeah. I mean, I have good friends and sometimes I don't, you know, particularly care for a single or something that they've worked on, but 
Um, but we've discussed Madonna, so we can move on from that. And I, we understand. <laughs> uh, but you know, I think uh, I well, you know, there again, I love I love the Beatles; they're my favorite. But I don't love every Beatles song, and and you know that's okay. And I, I'm sure Sir Paul would be fine with that. <laughs> Sir Paul McCartney is headlining Glastonbury this year, and oh, I saw. and I'm I'm going to be performing at Glastonbury, not singing. Oh. I'm doing in the comedy tent, so I won't get anywhere near him. But I am at Glastonbury with Sir Paul McCartney. So that's quite, oh. that's a humble brag, isn't it? It's that's not amazing. So, that's not really so humble. Cool. <laughs> it's really just a sentence, but I suppose it's what you take from that sentence. <laughs> I am. I'm genuinely chuffed. I'm 56. I've never been to Glastonbury. Right. I'm beyond excited. Okay. That's so wonderful. That's in Edinburgh? No, uh, no it's in Dorset. Oh, Dorset, is okay, it, okay. Dorset, I thought it was Somerset. Somerset. Dorset. I don't know. It's I don't England. Know. Okay. It's in England and there's a set in the name. It's in England. Can I ask you, <laughs> because you say you're a big fan of the Beatles, wh- what yeah. is the difference between British music and American music? Because a lot of British stars, like, for mm-hmm. example, Scylla Black, who yeah, I don't know who could told, told her she could sing, because in my opinion, she <laughs> couldn't. But she was a star here and then came over, did a residency in New York. It never really went anywhere. So it's it's yeah. funny how some Brits, you know, Harry Styles is the one from One Direction that's really gone on yeah. and had huge American success. I'm not sure I yeah. agree with the comparisons with David Bowie, um, but then that's just me. I don't really know a huge amount of music. So what differentiates mm-hmm. American music and British music? If there is such a thing, a different. I think, um, I, well, actually, I, I, you know, I have heard Madonna talk about this and she said, and I agree with this, you know, in the UK, it seems like it's about the art, you know, it's about what is the best song, you know, the best singer. And in the US, it seems like what's, the, you know, what's the most on trend or what's the biggest hit. Mm. Um, so I think if people can kind of do both, you know, you have Adele, who is just has this immaculate voice, wonderful, wonderful songs. I mean, it's undeniable. So I think, you know, that translates over here. I think same thing with Harry. Those songs are really, really solid. Mm. Um, I hadn't heard the David Bowie comparison. I had heard the Mick Jagger com- uh, comparison, but I hadn't mm. heard um, Bowie's. But uh, I think um, Harry is just I love his voice. I love the songs. George Michael, you know, timeless voice. Those songs, that, that canon of songs are so amazing, Elton John. So these people, I think, just in addition to being incredible artists, also just had, you know, these killer hooks that maybe uh, got their way into American ears. But it's always that big thing, isn't it, about breaking America and being, you know, and, and what it takes to do that. Because other mm-hmm. bands like Oasis, Oasis never broke America, uh, did they? I, th- I thought they did. Did they? I, I thought they were kind of one of the biggest... Uh, one of the last big rock bands here, <laughs> true okay. rock bands, rock stars. Um, and I certainly wish the brothers would get back together because they're, they're pretty amazing when they're together. I think one's had a hip replacement. So, I mean, th- oh, that, really? yes, I think Liam yeah. has had a hip replacement and he was doing yeah. something with Adidas in Salford recently. It was a kind of uh, comeback, th- well, comeback or it was just a presentation of, of new uh, work. But no, we have had a lot of British people that have gone over. Well, Joss Stone mm-hmm. went over oh, yeah. and all she did was steal one of your accents and then <laughs> came back um, <laughs> and then did the mass Singer. <gasps> have you done any work with the mass Singer? Because I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed with the Masked Singer. I have singer. not, but I would love to. Oh. I would absolutely love to. It's, I know a couple of people that work on that show and it would be really fun to be on that. It's one of those so, extraordinary shows where yeah. I saw the trailer for it, the, the mm-hmm. preamble for it, and just thought how ridiculous and how yeah. stupid are people and then yeah. was so furious that it was such a ridiculous idea that I watched the first episode just to confirm how much mm. I was going to hate it and I'm addicted. <laughs> it was the most addictive thing. I was just, um, I mean, it is stupid. I mean, I still it, it, am it completely and I, I am right, it is stupid, yeah. but it's Bloody marvelous. Because my favorite judge on the American one is Nicole Shirtlifter. I absolutely <laughs> adore her. And I also think that she should be a much bigger star than she is musically. Because I think she I is a fantastic vocalist. Yes. And I've always really enjoyed yeah. her albums. Mm-hmm. And, and you've heard her musical theater performances? No, because that's really oh. not my bag. I hate musicals. Oh. oh my God. I mean, why do you have to sing things like, hello, how are you? I mean, get out my effing face. Seriously. Check out. I will that's take pinking shears to your blouses. Um, no, 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 no. I don't like a musical. 
check out her performance of Don't Cry For Me Argentina from Avita. It is absolutely stellar. Oh, it's right. on YouTube. She she's phenomenal. Yeah. And I think she should be in Broadway shows because that's uh, there's so much pop Broadway right now. I think she would just be at home there. I've got a question, Gabe. If are you yeah. considering the success of your career, what career aspirations do you still have, if any? Bet you've got I, I have oh, so many. There's so many people I would love to work with. Sir mm-hmm. Paul being one, um, Cheryl Crow, Madonna, you know, all of these idols that I've had. I would love to, you know, produce with them for them and write, you know, with them or for them. Um, I would love to score movies. And I've been lucky to be able to score some indie movies and to do soundtrack stuff, which I've, I've loved. Um, but I really would, you know, love to dig my teeth into scoring movies, um, whether it's, you know, some epic, you know, uh, Hitchcock esque thing yeah, okay. or a comedy, you know, I, I love, uh, Bernard Herman and all of his scores for Hitchcock. So, you know, that's, I, I do have the kind of a classical, um, uh, what's the word? Uh, I, it, it just always, you know, tickles me. So, yeah. um, um, yeah. Funnily enough, I was listening to something on the radio yesterday about the film score, the scoring, musical scoring for Train Spotting, because mm-hmm. there are some oh. real iconic that take you right back to, um, and I think <clears throat> not Pulp Fiction. Was it Pulp Fiction? Oh, Pulp Fiction. Not Pulp Fiction. That's a film, isn't it? Oh goodness. Um, <clears throat> Oh, I'm trying to remember the artist, but anyway, yeah, I'm, my brain's gone blank because I'm menopausal. Um, but oh one of the <laughs> one of the most uplifting songs in Train Spotting with the raves going on, but that song was actually written because the guy was at the end of his tether and he was it was a cry for help. And so the uh, meaning behind the song when he wrote it is completely yeah. different to how people view it and listen to it. And I find that fascinating. Oh, interesting. Mm. I haven't seen the movie in forever. I need to revisit that mm-hmm. and uh, pay the score. I can't watch anything with drug taking in it. It's not my thing. Really? Yeah, no, no, it's it's really not for me. Look at you! You try to be all pure and no. I'm just saying biased. I don't enjoy it. Well, you don't enjoy drugs. No, I've not taken drugs for years. I'm too old now. No, good lord, You're honestly. I mean, I I used to, but yeah. I mean, I've been in McDonald's self soiling on mushrooms, as I've discussed on this show many a time before. Um, That's amazing, Gabe. How much do you enjoy working in the UK? We know that you've been here a couple of times. You're coming because you're coming back for Queen of the Universe um, this year as well, which I'm looking forward to. Um, So, what makes the UK special? You know, ever since I got it's the first day I got there in 2014 because I you know landed in London. Mm -hmm. It it just felt like it was exactly how I wanted it to be. It was wonderful musically. I felt at home. The people are just so kind and smart, (laughs) and. so every time I've been to the UK, I, I've been, let's see, three tours, a vacation, and then season one. So five times I've been, mm-hmm. and um, this will be my sixth time this year. Um, the last Belinda, Belinda tour, I was there for a month, loved it, was not ready to come home. When I was there for Queen of the Universe season one, it was a month and I wasn't ready to come back. Um, and I think I'll be there a little bit longer this time. It just is absolutely wonderful. It just feels good. That's how, how the only way I know how to explain it. And have you been to Scotland? Yes, I perform. I opened for Belinda at the Glasgow. Is it the Royal Hall? No, is that the Royal Concert, Royal Concert Hall? Hall? That's it. That's it. Yeah, and the crowd was fabulous. Oh my gosh, that was that was probably the best crowd of the whole tour. Um, Glasgow crowds have a reputation yeah. of being either oh. absolutely fabulous or foul. Oh. Utterly vile. Yeah. <laughs> they were but they either love wonderful. you or hate you and they'll let you know oh, okay. either way. So yeah. They they were very responsive right away. I was so thankful. And I, I put out a live album of that tour, and that was some of the um some of the performances were from that that show. Because I just went to see Sophie Ellis Baxter there recently, and it's a fantastic oh, yeah, yeah. venue. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a great venue. It's the first time I've ever been in it, and it was yeah, it was good. She came in on a horse. Oh, did you really? Yeah, it wasn't a That's real so horse. Cool. It was, um, oh. yeah, it was a horse on wheel. It was big. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it was a big horse, and she had, yeah, she had this um, support uh, holiday sidewinder. Have you ever come across her? Not literally, I don't think but so. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. Always so <laughs> base. <laughs> Always so base. If only they'd had the conversation before this had happened. Hi, I don't want a relationship. I want X. So we'll just move on. Someone's <laughs> someone's in one of our moods, unfortunately. So, and did you you had to do with the musical score of the bitch who stole Christmas, didn't you? Yeah. Um, so Brett, again, Leland, he, he wrote those original songs mm-hmm. and he brought me on to, to produce those. Yes. Uh, somebody else did the, the score 
um, f- for that. David uh, Steinberg did the score for that and he was phenomenal. Uh, but that was fun to do the, you know, pop orchestration for those numbers. Yes. No, I, I enjoyed that. That's another world of wonder thing. It's all drag queens. Yeah, Are you into yeah. drag queens? I, I've not been introduced formally, so I haven't. Don't look at me like that. Producer's looking at me like I've got two heads and I should be short. <laughs> oh, it's because the producer claims to be a drag queen in his <laughs> spare time, but, you know, any man with a beard could <laughs> pop no, on a dress you, and call it drag. Working with these um, gentle men. Um, yeah. Gentle ladies. Gentle ladies. Um, I'm discovering a whole new world about homosexuality and everything. But yes, yeah. I need to. You'll need to introduce me to the world of drag race. You need to. You need to drag it up. I think Gigi B's in Glasgow this weekend. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I saw her from afar at uh, DragCon. I didn't get a chance to stay to get up close in the way, but we, we said hi from afar. Oh, um, she... and I got to see some of the Queen of the Universe uh, finalists as well, which is wonderful. Oh well, I I love. I mean, I'm obsessed with Juju B. And on the last yeah. night of Queen of the Universe, I ran up and went, yeah. "Give me a message from my niece." Hold my dress. Oh. Um, but I did go and see Bianca um, oh, yeah. in Unsanitized a couple of weeks back. And that really, nice. Joan Rivers lives. That is the main thing. Her really? work continues. Mm. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, okay. That's really, cool. really, really good. Well, I uh, look yeah. forward to seeing you at the end of the summer. Because uh, yeah, I've said I'm going to take you out. Yes, I'll be there August 15th or so. Yes. And, and you know, uh, from the moment I heard, you know, doing the warm up for the shows, I mean, your your wit is just so clever and so fun. And, oh, and Brett and I, we, we would be taking notes like, oh, he said this, he said this, and just laughing in you know, our heads <laughs> off. It's so great. You're just brilliant. Well, Good. that's true, actually. <laughs> we do rather love him, even though we hate him in equal measures. <laughs> No, but we'll, we will have to, we will have to go and do, we will do a social thing. I'm going to take Gabe out for afternoon tea. Lovely. Yes. yes. I would love that. That yes. would be a oh, quintessential would English afternoon tea. Yes, absolutely. That would be delightful. Yes. 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 And then yes. I might take him to a bum bar if he's lucky. Well, I just turned down my membership. Did you go to the Grout Show? Oh, no, I'm not taking it to the Grout Show. No, you can go at the Clapham Grand. We'll get him there for nothing. <laughs> we'll be scraped off the floor. Gabe, it has been so nice talking to you and thank you for joining us in the middle of the night. Thank yeah. you for having me. Love, you know, you I so love much. you and I will speak to you very soon. Lovely to meet right, you, Gabe, and hopefully catch up you. with you. Mwah. I hope so. Bye. Bye, love. Bye. 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 Bye.